Hi guys, today we're talking about quantum physics and this is part three. So uh, in this problem we've got the work function here phi for titanium is 4.33 electron volts. Convert the value of the work function from electron volts to joules. So this is really easy um, if you know that uh, electron volts times the charge of an electron is going to give you joules. Uh, conversely, uh, if you had joules and you divided it by an electron, uh, it would give you your answer in electron volts. Okay, so and to prove that I put these equations here and uh, so what you can do is you can say a joule is kilograms times meters squared divided by second squared and a volt is kilograms times meter squared over amperes times seconds cubed and then of course uh, since this is an EV uh, we have to put the E which is going to be one uh, 1.6022 uh, times 10 to the negative 19th ampere seconds, or which is the same thing as a coulomb. So if you notice, the only difference here, uh, so we can cancel out this A, cancel out the A, uh, that S is going to be left with S squared, you can cancel that out. And the only, so now we have the same thing, kilograms times meter squared over, over second squared, uh, kilograms times meter squared over second squared, and the only difference is this number right here. So all you have to do is take your answer in electron volts, multiply it by this number, and you now have joules. And so I did that over here. So we got 4.33 electron volts times 1.6022 times 10 to the negative 19th ampere seconds. Well, it won't be ampere seconds anymore, but it's going to give you this answer, 6.94. Uh, times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So this for part A is going to be 6.94 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Right. For part 2, find the cutoff frequency. So uh, you've got your equations over here and we've got the cutoff wavelength is equal to H or Planck's constant times C over our work function. So uh, let's write that. So we've got wavelength, cutoff wavelength is going to equal H times C divided by our work function. All right? Now we need the cutoff frequency which is right here. So we know that uh, we know that this wavelength cutoff or the cutoff wavelength is equal to C divided by the cutoff frequency. So what we can do is we can replace this with that. So now this equation is going to look like this: C divided by the cutoff frequency equals h times c divided by our work function here. Okay, and so then uh, rewrite it once more and uh, throw the fc up here. So you're, in, you're gonna get, uh, uh, well first we'll just throw theta up here. So you're gonna get c, or not theta, sorry, phi. <laughs> C times phi, okay, which is your work function, divided by, you've got HC, H times C is going to give us our cutoff frequency. So you can cancel out those C's and you're left with, uh, you're left with phi or work function divided by Planck's constant. Now, uh, let's see here, Planck's constant, uh, as you can see down here, is in joule seconds. And so for part A, we converted this work function into joules. So joules divided by joule seconds is going to leave us with hertz. So it's the same. So if I were to say joules 
divided by uh, joule seconds. That's just going to leave us with a hertz, which is 1 over s or s to the negative 1. Okay, so when I do this, uh, I'm going to take 6.94 times 10 to the negative 19th divided by Planck's constant. So I took the answer from up here, 6.937526. Uh, you can round it to 6.94 or whatever. Divided by Planck's constant, and it's going to give us 1.05 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Okay, so this is going to be 1.05 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Okay, so that's for part B. That's for part A. Now for part C. What maximum wavelength of light incident on titanium releases photoelectrons from the surface? So when you're talking about maximum wavelengths, so you got your wavelength. We're talking about maximum. If it was minimum, right here, that would correspond to a higher frequency. Okay, and so since we're talking about maximum wavelength, we're going to be talking about a lower frequency, uh, which co corresponds or correlates to a lower energy. Okay, and so for that, we're going to just use uh, this right here, which is our cutoff wavelength. And that just means basically the cutoff wavelength says um, this is the maximum wavelength possible for uh, for there to be a light incident where photoelectrons are released from the surface. Okay. Um, now, if we were talking about wavelength minimum, um, that would correspond to a much higher frequency. Okay, and uh, that's a different equation. But anyways, so we put our C divided by our cutoff frequency, which we found down here. Um, so 1.05 times 10 to the 15th hertz. And that is going to give us... So you took C, 2.9979, and then divided it by our cutoff frequency. And this is going to give our cutoff wavelength, so 286 nanometers. 286 nanometers. Okay. So this is for part C. All right. For part D, if light of energy 8 electron volts is incident on titanium, what is the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectron? So I have this equation down here, and it says uh, kinetic energy max is equal to H times the frequency uh, minus our work function. Now, we know the work function is going to be this uh, 4.33 electron volts. So let's just put this in here minus 4.33 electron volts. Right. Now we have, it says light of energy, remember energy is E, okay, so it's 8 electron volts. And we know that, so we find HF, and HF is equal to E. So you just take 8 minus 4.33, and uh, you end up with 3.67 electron volts okay and then for part e it's really easy for photos of energy of eight electron volts what stopping potential would be required to arrest the current of the photoelectrons and that just means how do we make the current go to zero and to do that you just take uh, the negative of your ke max and so if you so this equation here shows that ke max equals electron delta Vs, and that just means, uh, and this Vs is your stopping potential, and it's going to be in volts, okay? So, you just take whatever your Ke max was, and instead of having it be electron volts, it's just going to be in volts, and that will make your current uh, go to zero. So, for part E, it's just going to be 
3.67 volts. And that's how you solve that problem.